The following audio presentation is a production of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, in association with the Division of Continuing Studies and the Institute on Ethnicity, Culture, and the Modern Experience. This production was originally funded by the New Jersey Historical Commission and has been remastered by the Rutgers ITV Studio. An old clock marks the passing of time inside Bill Schleicher's house in Branchburg, Somerset County. Schleicher is an author, a trustee of the Branchburg Historical Society, and a student of the American Revolution. At that time, Somerset County was a hotbed of rebel activity, and the surrounding Raritan River Valley rang with musket and cannon fire. New Jersey's strategic location between New York and Philadelphia made it the cockpit of the revolution. Major battles were fought here, from Trenton in the bitter cold winter of 1776 to the blistering heat of the Monmouth battlefield in 1778. Nearly 100 skirmishes and minor engagements were contested in New Jersey before hostilities ended in 1783. One of those skirmishes occurred near Schleicher's home in 1777, when British and Hessian troops from New Brunswick plundered a local mill and were escaping with wagon loads of loot when they were attacked and routed by the local militia. Schleicher reads an account of the battle by Samuel Sutphin of the Somerset County Militia. We took the teams and the wagons which were sent off under escort to Morristown. A short time after, a company of Hessians opened fire upon us from behind a hedge with some three or four field pieces and retreated. Dr. Vanderveer, who had rode very near them before they were discovered, was taken prisoner by them and carried off to New Brunswick. Samuel Sutphin, says Schleicher, was a hero of the Revolution, not only for his valiant service or for the wounds he suffered during the war. Sutphin also was a slave, serving in place of his master. He was, wasn't a free man defending his home and hearth, but rather he was the property, the chattel of another man, and he fought willingly for this country, and he believed in the cause of liberty. Sutphin was born in 1747, one of tens of thousands of slaves held in the state. It wasn't until 1804 that the New Jersey legislature passed an act to gradually abolish slavery in the state. Although conditions for slaves living in the North were generally better than on southern plantations, life for a slave in New Jersey could be brutal. In 1752, a slave convicted of murdering his master was burned at the stake in Somerset Courthouse. And Schleicher believes that Sutphin, then a child, was there. All of the slaveholders from the area brought their slaves to witness the burning as a, an example. And so we have this picture of Samuel, five years old, probably clutched in his mother's arms, witnessing this terrible execution. Sutphin spent most of his life farming, but he became a soldier when the revolution broke out. That's when he was purchased by Caspar Berger. The two agreed that Sutphin would serve in his master's place in the militia, and that the slave would be freed at war's end. As a member of the 1st Regiment, Somerset County Militia, stationed at Communipaw, now Jersey City, Sutphin watched as the vast British fleet anchored in New York Harbor. He fought in the Battle of Long Island in August 1776, a disastrous defeat for Washington. In 1779, he fought in Upper New York State against Indians allied with the British. Returning from the expedition in February 1780, Sutphin's company stopped at West Point. There, they were attacked by Loyalists, British regulars, Hessians, and Scottish Highlanders who had crossed the Hudson on the ice. Sutphin killed one of the enemy during the battle and was himself wounded twice in the leg. One of the musket balls hit a button on his gaiter and drove it into his leg. Until his death day, he bore the scars from that battle. Sutphin fought alongside his neighbor, James Arry one of thousands of free black men to fight for the Americans during the Revolution. And there were others from New Jersey. In the 1830s, a reporter for the Burlington Gazette wrote this account of his meeting with a black man named Oliver Cromwell. His attenuated frame, his silvered head, his feeble movements combined to prove that he is very aged. And yet, comparatively few are aware that he is among the survivors of the gallant army who fought for the liberties of our country in the days which tried men's souls. Cromwell was a free black man born in Burlington County. He served in the trying days of 1776 as the Americans retreated across New Jersey. 
He crossed the Delaware with Washington in December of that year and fought at Trenton, a battle which turned the tide for the Americans. And he described Washington's bold move around the British after the Battle of Trenton and the engagement at Princeton a few days later. He gives the details of the march from Trenton to Princeton and told us, with much humor, that they knocked the British about lively at the latter place. Stories of black patriots like Cromwell and Samuel Sutphin are well known. Lesser known, says Giles Wright of the New Jersey Historical Commission, are the exploits of black men who served with forces loyal to the British. One person who was probably the most illustrious, the most uh, outstanding uh, most significant figure serving the military cause of the Loyalists was a New Jerseyan. And by the time that he's engaged in the American Revolution, he was referred to as Colonel Ty. Colonel Ty started life as a slave named Titus in Shrewsbury, Monmouth County. As hostility between the American colonists and the British crown intensified, Wright says, slaves like Titus took note of the talk of revolution. Black slaves were not unmindful of the, the rhetoric, the, the language associated with the American Revolution, freedom, equality. Titus ran away to Virginia in 1775, the same year that Lord Dunmore, that colony's royal governor, declared that any slave who fought for the crown would be set free. Titus joined the other black men in Dunmore's Ethiopian regiment and returned to his native New Jersey in 1778 to fight in the Battle of Monmouth. Now known as Ty, he remained in New Jersey after the battle to command a band of marauders operating from Sandy Hook. For two years, he terrorized the patriot communities of Monmouth County, and his exploits won him respect from his foes and the honorary title of colonel from the British. In 1780, he, leading this band of black military men, fighters, uh, which was called the Black Brigade, he shot in the wrist and several days later dies from that wound because lockjaw uh, set in. Colonel Ty died a Loyalist hero. Oliver Cromwell witnessed the British surrender at Yorktown in 1781 and earned a military pension. But Samuel Sutphin's fate after the war was less glorious. His master reneged on his promise to free Samuel and sold him to another. Sutphin remained a slave for 20 more years before he was permitted to buy his own freedom. Later, the federal government denied Sutphin's request for a pension. But in 1836, the New Jersey legislature passed a special act granting Sutphin an annual pension of $50. Samuel Sutphin died in 1841. Twenty years later, another generation of soldiers would shed blood on American battlefields to fulfill, for all races, the promises of the American Revolution. I'm Paul Conlow for New Jersey Times.